Hey guys, we are going to study the unit GIT, the chapter Digestion and Absorption of Carbohydrates. So it is an important chapter where they usually ask about digestion and absorption of carbohydrates for 5 marks. First, we'll look about the digestion of the carbohydrates. So we'll make a chart so that we'll get simplified version of the digestion of carbohydrates. First, we'll write all the headings. First one is the area, juice, enzyme present in that area, substrate, as well as the end product. So starting with the mouth, first area is the mouth. So the main juice present here is saliva, salivary amylase. So the enzyme is salivary amylase. Okay, so the salivary amylase is the enzyme which converts the polysaccharides into the disaccharides. So what is example for disaccharides? It includes dextrin as well as maltose. So mouth in the mouth area, there is saliva. There is salivary enzyme which mainly converts the polysaccharides. It converts the polysaccharides into disaccharides that mainly constitutes the dextrin and maltose okay so we are done with the mouth next moving on to stomach make a chart like this so that you can study it on the previous day of exam you can just revise it so once we have finished the mouth after the mouth there is stomach so if we see the stomach in the stomach there are there is presence of gastric juice as we know there is presence of gastric juice the enzyme involved is gastric amylase gastric amylase which converts the weak amylase and the end product is negligible because the substrate itself is weak so the end product is negligible so put a dash here and for substrate write it as weak amylase so further moving on to small intestine in the small intestine there is presence of two main juices First one is the pancreatic juice. The second one is the succus entricus. So third one moving on to small intestine. In the small intestine, there is mainly presence of two juices. Two juices. First one is the pancreatic juice. First we'll study about the pancreatic juice. So pancreatic juice constitutes of the enzyme pancreatic amylase pancreatic amylase which converts same like the salivary amylase that is it converts the polysaccharides into disaccharides so it converts the polysaccharides into disaccharides that is dextrin maltose as well as maltotriose so in the salivary amylase there is only two end product that is dextrin as well as maltose whereas in the small intestine in the pancreatic juice there is presence of dextrin maltose another one product that is maltotriose 
Further moving on to the second one of the small intestine, that is the succus entricus. So in the succus entricus, there is presence of five main enzymes in the small intestine the succus entricus part mainly constitutes of five main enzyme first moving on to the sucrose which converts sorry the enzyme is sucrase sucrase enzyme converts the sucrose into glucose and fructose it converts sucrose into glucose and fructose they are the components of the sucrose the second one includes the maltase enzyme maltase enzyme so the maltase enzyme mainly converts the maltose as well as the maltotriose into glucose it converts maltose plus maltotriose into glucose the third one is the lactase enzyme which is for milk first one sucrose sucrase maltase lactase the lactase is the one which converts lactose into glucose as well as galactose gg that is lactose into glucose and galactose the fourth one is the dextrinase which converts dextrin maltose maltotriose into glucose dextrinase is the one which converts maltose dextrin and maltotriose into glucose the last one is trihalase trihalase is the one which converts trihalose into glucose it converts trihalose into glucose so we do a quick revision of this chart area there are three main areas mouth so stomach as well as small intestine in the mouth there is saliva which the enzyme present is salivary amylase which converts the polysaccharides into disaccharides that is dextrin as well as maltose in the stomach there is presence of gastric juice which has the enzyme gastric amylase which converts the weak amylase and the action of the end product is negligible so you can put a dash in the small intestine there are presence of two main juices that is pancreatic juice in the pancreas region and succus entricus pancreatic juice has the enzyme pancreatic amylase which converts same as the saliva that is polysaccharides into disaccharides dextrin maltose and maltotriose the circus entricus mainly constitutes of the five enzymes sucrase maltase lactase dextrinase and trihalase sucrase con converts the sucrose into glucose and fructose maltase converts maltose and maltotriose into glucose lactase converts lactose into glucose and galactose dextrinase converts maltose dextrin and maltotriose into glucose trihalase converts trihalose into glucose this is about the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates a simple chart now we'll study its written format so further moving on the, the digestion of the carbohydrates first one we look about we look in the mouth so in mouth there is presence of amylolytic enzymes so what are amylolytic enzymes so these are the enzymes which is mainly involved in the digestion of the carbohydrates so they are called as amylolytic enzyme so in the mouth only amylolytic enzyme is present which converts the salivary in the presence of salivary amylase which converts the polysaccharides into disaccharides so presence of amylolytic enzyme so what is this it is the enzyme which is 
involved in the digestion of carbohydrates so it is the only enzyme present in saliva this is an important point only enzyme present in saliva so next moving on in the stomach as i have said there is presence of gastric juice which consists of a weak amylase which plays a very minor role in the digestion of carbohydrates so there is presence of gastric juice which contains a weak amylase which plays a minor role in digestion of carbohydrates further moving on in the intestinal part so in the intestine that is small intestine so in the intestine there is pancreatic juice there are actually there are two main important enzymes involved first one is pancreatic juice and the second one is the succus entericus first we'll look after the pancreatic juice so the enzyme involved here is pancreatic amylase and the second one is succus entericus which mainly consists of four enzymes that is sorry five main enzymes first one is sucrase maltase lactase trihalase and dextrinase so these are the five main enzymes present in the succus entericus moving on to the final products of the carbohydrate digestion so the main products of the carbohydrates includes the three thing that is glucose fructose as well as the galactose the glucose is around 80% whereas the fructose and galactose constitutes of 20% so this is about the digestion of the carbohydrates further moving on to absorption of the carbohydrates so in the absorption of carbohydrates the carbohydrates are mainly absorbed in the small intestine they are mainly absorbed in the small intestine as the monosaccharides so we'll study about the three types of absorption in the in the carbohydrates glucose absorption galactose absorption as well as fructose absorption first looking on to glucose absorption absorption of glucose so in the absorption of glucose glucose is transported from lumen of the small intestine into the epithelial cells in the mucous membrane of the small intestine so this is the first important point so
glucose is transported from the lumen of small intestine intestine into epithelial cells of mucous membrane in small intestine so what is transported glucose is transported in the presence of the sodium co-transport that is a very important point to be noted in the presence of in the presence of sodium co-transport in the presence of sodium co transport energy for this is obtained by binding of the sodium ion as well as glucose molecule to carrier protein for this energy this process energy is required so energy is given by the binding of sodium as well as glucose molecule which binds with the carrier protein this is the another important point to be noted so first absorption of glucose it takes place from the lumen of the small intestine the glucose is transported into epithelial cells of the mucous membrane in the small intestine this process takes place in the presence of sodium co-transport so for this process there is also requirement of energy energy is mainly given by the sodium glucose molecule which combines with the carrier protein from the epithelial cells after it comes to epithelial cells glucose is absorbed into portal vein by facilitated diffusion this is another important point after this process occurs there will be absorption of glucose into the portal vein by facilitated diffusion absorption of glucose into the portal vein by the process facilitated diffusion by facilitated diffusion the glucose is absorbed into the portal vein so sodium ion moves laterally into intercellular space during this process from here it is transported into blood by active transport by utilizing the energy liberated in the breakdown of atp after it after this process comes here see we have here sodium as well as glucose so in this molecule in this two molecules the glucose comes here and it is absorbed in the portal vein whereas the sodium comes laterally into intercellular cell sodium comes laterally into the intercellular cell and it is transported back to blood it is transported back to blood in the presence of atp it is transported back to blood in the presence of atp absorption of glucose from uh, glucose is usually transported from lumen of small intestine to epithelial cells of mucous membrane in the presence of sodium co-transport so for this energy is required which is given by the sodium glucose molecule which binds to the carrier protein so the glucose will be absorbed into the portal vein by facilitated diffusion whereas the sodium will be transported laterally into intercellular cells where it will be transported back to blood again in the presence of atp this is about the absorption of glucose further moving on to the absorption of galactose so absorption of galactose the galactose is absorbed from the small intestine with the same mechanism of glucose how the glucose is following the same mechanism just replace it by galactose the galactose is also reabsorbed 
in small intestine same like glucose further moving on to the absorption of fructose so fructose is mainly absorbed into the blood by facilitated diffusion so fructose are usually converted into glucose and glucose follows its same pathway so fructose are absorbed in blood whereas glucose and uh, galactose are absorbed directly in the small intestine fructose will be first absorbed in the blood then through the sodium intercellular transport it moves to the small intestine absorbed in blood so this fructose gets converted into glucose and glucose follows its path so that's it about the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates it's a very important five marker question where they'll be asking about explain about the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates so hope you like this video in the next video we'll study about the digestion and absorption of proteins as well as digestion and absorption of fats so please do like share comment and subscribe thank you